Hey, Robbie Lockman here with Harness, and today we're going to be going through your first Istio deployment. If you're not familiar with what Istio is, Istio is a service mesh that's used to help your applications and services discover and wire together each other by taking away a lot of the networking hardwiring that is required. Uh, we'll be going through the book info application that is actually shipped with the Istio distribution. Uh, we'll be running through setting this up in Minikube and validating that we're able to use a few pieces of Istio, uh, such as the gateway controller uh, and looking at routing rules. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is actually get the Istio distribution. Uh, by issuing a simple curl command, I actually made a folder ahead of time called Istio. So let's go ahead and get the latest version of Istio. Perfect. Now, this has given us some, ins some instruction about how to export to our path, but don't worry, we'll do that another way. So the next thing we want to do is actually CD into the Istio folder. And when we're there, uh, let's go ahead and export the path. And so we can run Istio CTL once we export the path. So export the path, the current word directory, and add to the end of the path. Perfect. Now, time now it's time to start Minikube. And now with the Minikube installation, if we're reading the, the book info installation instructions, it does require a pretty beefy machine, but we can get away with just the bare minimum. I'm gonna be using eight gigabytes of memory and also setting up for four, four virtual CPUs. So let's go ahead and get that started. And our Minikube installation is almost complete. Fantastic, Minikube is ready to start start to be used. Let's just go ahead and validate the installation by running Minikube dashboard and making sure that the dashboard comes up. And perfect, or just like that, our dashboard comes up. And now let's go about getting our particular Istio installation inside of Minikube. Once Minikube is up and running, let's go ahead and run the Istio CTL tool to make sure that our cluster is okay to install Istio by running verify install. Taking a quick look, perfect. Looks like everything is ready to rock. The Istio version that we downloaded, 1.3.1, shifts the book info. So as simple as running QCodal apply in the Istio demo of that YAML that has been shipped, we can go ahead and start shipping the bits that we need. Don't worry about the unable to recognize destination rules. We'll go ahead and install those a little bit later, but we can validate that our services have started by getting this by using kubectl get service, the Istio system. And here we have our particular items have started. So such as the ingress controller, the telemetry unit. And so perfect. Looks like everything has started for us perfectly here. One thing that we do want to do is actually create a namespace so that Istio can actually inject have uh, injection for us by running this command, but kubectl label namespace default istio injection equals enabled. So this allows for our sidecars to be injected in the default namespace. This is quite important for how istio is supposed to work. Uh, now that we have that installed, let's go ahead and install the book info application, which is under the samples folder. Perfect. The last piece that we need to install is actually the, the book info gateway, which is located uh, in the book info folder by running this kubectl command. We can validate that the gateway has started by running kubectl get gateway. Perfect, it's just started. So now it's time for us to wire up the gateway. Uh, actually, Minikube gives us a helper command called Minikube IP. So we can learn that what the IP address of the master on the Minikube instance is. So it's 192.168.9.10. Uh, the first thing is we're going to be using that particular IP as our ingress host. And so we're going to wire up a few, a few environmental variables. Uh, we're, going to we're going to wire up ingress host. And then these are from the actually from the book info example. We're going to wire up the ingress port and the secure ingress port uh, by inspecting the particular service JSON. And so we're gonna be looking for a specific uh, element there. 
And the same thing we're going to do, we're going to find it for the HTTPS version. So we're going to go ahead and wire the secure ingress port. And we're going to make sure that we're going to wire the gateway URL to be the ingress host and the ingress port. And to get to our gateway URL, we can simply just do this, get the gateway URL. Having to see that, we're running on 192.168.99.100 on port 31380. Awesome. We can take a look at the book sample up by going to our gateway URL slash product page. And here we have the product page, a comedy of errors. Great, we're cooking with gas now. We're almost there with our full Istio deployment. If you remember those errors that we had at the beginning, saying that a destination rule couldn't be found, we can actually apply those destination rules here. Destination rules are quite important to Istio, as they help to define rules that your routes need to take programmatically. So perfect, we have destination rules are completed. We can validate the destination rules by getting destination rules with kubectl. And we can see that these particular destination rules were completed. And just like that, you have your Minikube and Istio, your first deployment. You can officially say that you have your first Istio deployment. We can take a look at what's been deployed by going back into the Kubernetes dashboard and taking a look at everything that we've been deploying. Uh, in, the, in the next version of the series, or in part two, we're going to be taking a look at some of the pitfalls and challenges with different service meshes. So I hope you stay tuned. Like any good net citizen, let's go ahead and delete what we just did. So in the particular samples book info platform cube folder, there's actually a cleanup.sh. And so we can just run that. Since we didn't deploy anything outside the default namespace, we can go ahead and say OK. And all of our particular items are being deleted. Perfect. And then when you're all set, you can run the minikube delete command to stop minikube. And just like that, we're all set. Thanks for your time today. I hope to catch you again. Cheers, Robbie.